Hello, today I'm going to show you about my Iron Man motorised faceplate. And I'm also going to show you about my light up eye lenses which you can also see through. But first of all, here is a piece of film about a dining room table. Okay, so here's an interesting dining room table with a pull out leaf. So what happens is, these pieces pull to one side, and there's the pull-out leaf. And it's got a very interesting mechanism, which basically underneath has a piece of wood with a hinge at each end, which allows it to fold out, so it gives us this motion, which is kind of what we need for Iron Man's faceplate. And because there's a hinge at each end, the top piece can move at a different angle, so eventually this folds out to here and then the leaf folds out. We're not really interested in that, what we really want to know about is the mechanism underneath, which is basically a piece of wood with hinges at each end, which gives us that motion. So here's the helmet and basically what I've done is implemented the dining room table hinge um, inside the helmet. So we've got a servo, something straight and another servo at the top, um, which basically means, as with the dining room table, the faceplate can move independently of the hinge that pulls it up, which means we can get that nice motion. It could probably move further as well. Um, had a couple of issues with making the bracket wide enough to fit over the centerpiece of the helmet. Um, if you look on my website, which is xrobots.co.uk, there's a step-by-step -step of how this was made and all of the pieces shown outside the helmet. These servos are basically, they would be Futabar S3003s, but in fact these are fake Chinese ones which I got for about £2 on eBay. They're probably not quite up to the job, had some trouble actually getting it to work. So what I had to do was put some springs in the back here. So. There's a couple of springs on the back of the faceplate and some strings which, when the helmet's shut, just push this down, helpfully run into the grooves in the helmet there on either side. Um, you can see them there. And obviously that actually helps, helps lift the faceplate up and pull it into position. Otherwise the servos struggle a bit. So I'd recommend that you actually either don't use fake Chinese servos, use genuine ones or use some higher power servos if you can. So that's basically how it works. Let me just turn that back on again. There we go. So I've actually um, programmed waypoints in there so that it lifts up and goes down with this nice motion. Sometimes it gets caught on the foam at the front, which is why that just bounced then. So I've got a couple of things still to sort out. But I'm using a, a Palulu Mini Maestro six channel servo controller, which you can see in the front here, which is this tiny board, which will eventually all the electronics will be tidied up and put inside the helmet. So that's the thing there. It's got six servo channels and you can also configure the spare ones for digital in or out, which means I can use the uh, spare channels to turn the lights on in the eyes. Um, basically this board is controlled by RS232 serial, so all that I've got running into the helmet here is the power and I've got one wire for the, for the basically serial comms, so the plan is to have everything in the suit being a serial device, including the hand repulsors and the arc reactor, so I can just send data to them to turn things on and off and of course um, operate the faceplate. So at the moment I'm using a Pickaxe 18X development board amongst other things. The rest of this is just uh, a battery and a voltage regulator, so I've got five volts. And I've got this switch here which is out of an electric drill which is just temporary at the moment. Um, Two-way switch to operate the faceplate. So because I'm just sending data into the helmet along this one wire, if I actually put batteries in there, which I could just about squeeze in, then you could actually make it wireless as well, which would make it much easier when you, if you wanted to take the helmet off, not to have to disconnect wires. So one of the plans is to have an infrared receiver just under the chin, 
and an infrared transmitter in the chest of the helm, uh, chest of the costume, um, which basically sends data for the faceplate opening and closing and turning the lights on and off, so that uh, the helmet could be completely wireless, which would make it much easier for going to conventions and so on, rather than having it stuck on your head with a cable up your neck, which you probably can't reach to disconnect with the arms of the, and the body of the suit on. So that's the basic principle uh, with which it works. As I say, there's a step-by-step -step of the mechanics on my website. And there's also um, an article about the light-up eye lenses, which you can see through, which I'm just going to grab and I'll show you those next. So here are my eye lenses. If I turn them on... There we go, and I'll just put this one in the helmet so we can see what we've got there. I've had to cut them about a bit to fit around the mechanics. So these are um, obviously lenses which cover the entire eye there, as you can see, but you can also see straight through them from the other side. And that is because they are basically made from mirror sunglasses. You can see they're quite um, sort of shiny. I basically got some cheap mirror sunglasses from eBay and cut them up. And then I covered them with a layer of this scrim fabric, which is actually um, intended for the veil of a bride's, a bride's uh, whatever it is, a wedding dress. So um, basically the mirror lenses are covered with this scrim. Um, the plastics around is just thin strips of styrene plastic glued on. And I've got some LEDs in the bottom there. Let me just turn them back on. Which shine across the scrim fabric to diffuse the light. So um, basically I just used some of these cheap, cheap battery lights, which I think were $2.99 for a pair on eBay with free delivery. So those are just hot glued in there. At the moment I've got the battery box that came with it, which is just two AA batteries. But eventually I'm going to be replacing that with the power supply that I've already got over here. And then as I said, I'm gonna wire those uh, to a spare channel configured as a digital out so I can turn them on and off. So I still only have to send data along one wire to the helmet and I can control the lights and I can control everything. So I think that's all I have for now. Let's just have one quick Demo of the helmet again, and that will be all. Yes, it still fits on my head. I've had to disconnect the electronics for now, but uh, it fits quite well despite the servo in the forehead. And uh, if I put the faceplate down, you know, yeah, my eyes are in the right place and I can see fine.